Times were tough, so I sold my soul. Hey, Internet Drinker Funk here, and I know I'm a week behind, but it, it's kind of been a week. And by the way, Happy New Year to everybody and all the subscribers, and welcome back to my reusable space program. This is going to be the season one finale, and I figured since this is the finale, we should do a tour of the whole reusable space program and the only person or the only Kerbal who can really do this is Jebediah. So I've transferred Jebediah from the Liberator to the space SUV. I think I named this one the Bronco and his first trip is to land at the moon base. I kind of skipped the whole part where I was trying to get closer to the moon base because it took way, way too long. And this video is already going to be way too long. And, you know, it's, it's just, it's just what's happening. So here we are, we're coming in for a landing on the surface of the moon. I'm calling it the moon. I usually call it the mun. I, you know, it's, it's 2023 now, and it's, it is what it is. So, here I am coming in for a landing, and I'm dropping frames really badly, and this is one of the reasons why this video got delayed, is as of the recording of this part of the episode... I did not realize the reason I'm dropping frames is I'm having computer hardware problems. And, well, yeah, I, I shouldn't be dropping frames, but what's happening, and I don't realize it is my computer is overheating and causing causing it to lag but here Jebediah is flying to the little base and he's gonna go and just pop in real fast and make sure everything's okay he can't pop in there because it's all full and he can't pop in there because it's awful. There are more people on this base than I remember putting there. And yeah, so just pop in here. Yeah, there we go. Just a quick pop in and pop out and fly back. So... If, if you, because I didn't know this at first, I know it now, obviously, but um, if you see me flying the Kerbals around on the surface, uh, once they're outside on an EVA, hit R, and then you can control them. The shift button is how you make him go straight up, and then WASD uh, moves normally. You kind of control the direction with the mouse. It's, it's, it is a little weird. Anyway, I'm taking back off. I thought I would try and get an encounter right at launch, and it didn't didn't quite work. Uh, I didn't quite launch into the same plane, so uh, I'll have to go through and use the rendezvous planner to get an encounter. And... That mission I went is the only one that really doesn't have a purpose. Everything else Jebediah is going to do is going to have an additional purpose 
for the reusable space program. As in, all these transfers and visits he's going to be doing are not just for the sake of moving Jebediah to a- another place. As in, all the sh- from this point on, once he's docked with Challenger Station, all the movements are going to have a secondary purpose, and he's just going to be kind of along for the ride. So here we are. We I'm using the rendezvous planner through MechJeb to get my encounter. And now all I gotta do is dock with the station. And I'm you know, my I also have the time sped up so you don't have to watch me laboriously try and dock. Because this really took longer than it should have. But, you know, it's okay. I'm, I'm going to get there. So this was the second space station I built. And this one's in orbit of the Mun. I currently have three space stations. One in orbit of Kerbin, one of the Mun, and one in orbit of Minmus. I named them after the space shuttles. So around Kerbin is Enterprise Station. This was the second space station around the Mun, so this is Columbia Station. Did I call it Challenger Station earlier? Anyway, Columbia Station is in orbit of the Mun, and Challenger Station is in orbit of Minmus. Now that Jebediah is there, I'm going to transfer him to my tanker craft, and the tanker is going to make its run to Enterprise Station and deliver some rocket fuel. So, currently the way the reusable space program works, the mining ship lands on the MUN, it mines, converts ore into fuel, flies it back up to the MUN station, and then the tanker fills up and flies back to Enterprise Station. I kind of cut a whole bunch of that transfer out because now it's already made its voyage from the Mun into orbit of Kerbin and rendezvoused with Enterprise Station and it's coming in for a very very sideways cockeyed docking maneuver And it's at this point where I thought I had everything set up and I realized that the next movement that Jebediah is going to be doing is to land back on Kerbin via the SSTO, which I don't have docked at the space station. So as soon as I get this tanker docked, I'm going to have to launch the SSTO from the surface and fly up here, and that way Jebediah can land. Almost a little bit closer. There we go. There we go. And we're docked. And it's at this point where if I had remembered to actually... There we go. So here's the SSD. It's already taken off. Gemini is not on it yet. So this is the SSD I've been using for the and it seems to work well to get into orbit and enough fuel to do some orbital maneuvering. And I'm going to go ahead and just cut a whole bunch of that out and crossfade to where it's already 
got into orbit and rendezvoused with the space station and here it's coming in for its docking and I will transfer Jebediah over. Just a little bit more. And it's about that time like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to take the solar panels down before I die. And I did that just in time. Nothing's broken. If I had to do it again, I think... I don't think it really needs four air intakes. And the RCS is not exactly aligned to where it's easy to maneuver for docking. But since this is the one I've been using to begin since the beginning and it it works, I'm not going to really change anything at this point. So transfer Jebediah over to the SSTO and now it can undock. And deorbit and come in for a landing. I still have a lot to do, and at this point, I'm still losing frames due to my computer overheating. And this is a problem I don't realize yet is happening. So I'm just going to crossfade over. As you can see, I came in just a little bit short of the space center and so i have to fly a little bit over the mountains let's just oh wow that crossfade didn't really work out well anyway here i am coming in for a landing uh if possible i do prefer to try and land on the runway huh that's a weird edit Anyway, here I am coming in um, on the runway now. I'm not sure what happened there. I had everything. It, anyway, so there's some other aircraft there. I'm going to park the SSTO there for now and get Jebediah out. Because he had... Ooh, use the ladder. So this is a newer aircraft that I don't think... I've used yet in this series and it's designed specifically to go as fast as possible because I don't want to take any longer than I have to and so Now that Jebediah has made it back to the Kerbal Space Center, he has to go make a visit to the North Pole Base. And his reason for going there is the Highway 47 crew is currently all at the North Pole Base. And for Season 2, I need them back at the KSC. So this will give Jebediah a chance to go and check out the North Pole base and he can then pick up the Highway 47 crew and the Highway 47 crew will be able to do what they need to do for next season and Jebediah can move on to the next part of his mission. Little flip out there, but that's okay. We got it all under control. The Kerbals are having a great time. And we're just flying to the North Pole. And it's not going to take, shouldn't take really, at least not super long. Not compared to driving there in a rover train. over 17 episodes. 
if you're interested in seeing me drive a rover train, I, I have done that. It was our 60 subscriber special. It was so long ago that we've gotten we've gained 41 subscribers since I started. So, yes, we I drove a rover all the way from the Kerbal Space Center runway. Actually, a little bit further from the run runway because I assembled it in one of the parking lots. I drove it all the way to you know, close by the North Pole. It's not exactly on the North Pole, but it's pretty close. And at this point, I'm just trying to land as close to the North Pole as possible, or the North Pole base, that is. And I don't know how to say it. I'm, I'm going to miss it. Not not too bad, but at some point in time, I think I'm heading right towards it, and like right now, I'm heading right towards it, and somehow, I, right here, I, everything, I just flew right over it, I figured I'm not that far away, so I'll land and just turn around real fast. I'm a little bit further away than I meant to be, but that's okay. I'll just I'll just taxi taxi all the way there. And y you know, since I spent so much time driving to the North Pole that a little bit of taxiing, you know, that's not going to hurt me. And there they are on the horizon is the North Pole base, and the rover train is still there. So we did reach our goal of 100 subscribers. So starting next season, I will be driving the rover train to the South Pole. I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to do that, but I will. And right now, the Highway 47 crew is leaving the North Pole base, and they're embarking on the aircraft, so Jebediah can fly us back to the Kerbal Space Center. There we go. Get vomit on. And that's everybody. So... Time to head back to the Kerbal Space Center. You can see all the bases that I used as kind of as waypoints to the North Pole. I'm going to actually have to launch a survey, I guess, to find the best route all the way to the South Pole from the North Pole. And this aircraft might actually be what I need to use. First things first, though, I need to put, I need to land a base at the South Pole. So the, I'm not really worried about fuel. And right now I'm just doing some hops up into trying to get kind of as high as I can and then coast down and do it again. And I figured, I think I made it there in with like three, three small hops. Probably not the most efficient flight path, but either way, it was kind of fun. 
And right now I realize I'm actually a little bit too far west. So I need to he start heading a little bit, you know, to the, to the left. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come end up not on the correct side of the mountains that I want to. And I'm kind of... That's okay. I'll just fly over the mountains and I can see the Space Center. Now all I have to do is line up on the runway and this, this isn't my best landing that I'm about to do. I feel like I, I lined up pretty well and let's do this in real time. Yeah, that a little bit hard, and now I'm, um, for some reason, I, like, looked away once I got on the ground, and that was a bad, I was tired, that's what I'm going to say. But we're on the ground, all I have to do now is turn around, and I messed this up, I should have slowed down a little bit more. I ran off the runway. It's, it's fine. It's a little bit of first out of it. So at this point, um, how do I put it? I'm on a different computer. I'm recording from a different computer. My, the computer I have been recording on, the overheating issue, I realize that it's overheating and it's gotten worse and I have to do something about it. But in the meantime, I'm not going to be able to record from that computer. So I, I'm recording on a different machine. I was able to transfer my save to a different machine. And you, know, you can notice that everything seems to be running a little bit smoother. Uh, normally, I had also forgotten at this point to... I normally don't record my mouse. I don't know if people prefer it or don't prefer it. Careful, Jebediah. Anyway, that's why the, the mouse is present now and it hasn't been it's because I've switched machines and yeah so right now there's a several aircraft I think I have four aircraft right there the SSTO the is that the K4 the K5 the aircraft I think is the K16 you can see the base dropper is actually over there on the left parked right in front of the space plane hangar and Jebediah is going to go and head inside the space plane hangar for now and he's going to get on board a new well not a new rocket but a rocket And let's go ahead and fade out now. So here we are, and Jebediah is flying this base. Reasonable. I'm sure most of those boosters survived. They all had parachutes. Some of them just might have exploded a little bit. So, 
I noticed that I have, an, I have one of these bases on the surface of the MUN, and I had intended to put one on the surface of Minmus, but I hadn't done it yet. And it's one of the places I wanted Jeb to visit. And when I realized it wasn't there, I figured, why not just have Jeb fly it there? So... Used its booster, now it's using its own engines to fly to Minmus. Now this base on its own has about just under 2,000 Delta V. I think it's 1,800 which is plenty to it should be enough to get it to into orbit of Minmus and make a landing as long as I don't really mess it up like I almost do right here so yeah I really mess the orbit up and I I was way too far out, and I almost completely lost my Minmus capture. And right here, like, I'm having trouble actually establishing any sort of orbit. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't figure out why I couldn't fix the orbit until... Eventually, I just, I couldn't make a maneuver now. Eventually, I just, I, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do it on my own. So I did the, I burned prograde, and that got me to have the, where my periapsis was above the surface. So now I'm going to burn retrograde at periapsis and establish an orbit around Minmus. So also what I don't realize right now is my orbit is completely opposite of the orbit I want. I'm going in the wrong direction. Which technically isn't a problem. Except I wanted to align the plane with the space station. And that when I used the rendezvous planer to do that, I didn't realize that I was going in the wrong direction yet. It's obvious with sped up footage, but I, w I didn't have it sped up at the time, obviously. But, yeah, so I had to completely reverse my orbit, which luckily this is Minmus, and it doesn't take um, that much delta V to do that. So it was fine. And now I'm coming in for a landing, and landing on Minmus is... It's not hard. The hard part is that it just takes so long. Like at one point, you know, you feel like you should burn towards the surface. But no, that's, that's not what I'm doing. I did want to make sure that I landed on one of the planes and that's what I did now I have made another mistake because originally I didn't plan on having this I planned on already having the base there and then Jebediah was going to ride the SUV 2 from Enterprise Station and land at the Minimus base because I forgot I hadn't actually put the this base on Minmus. So I'm going to have to do one extra small mission before I get Jebediah back up in orbit of Minmus. But here we have the Jebediah's land at the base. We're going to extend the antennas. Hello. 
most. Why didn't I leave that? I thought I hit it. Oh well. And so here we are back at Enterprise Station, and there is the SUV. This is the SUV2. Ah, this one's I named Bronco. The SUV1 is Jimmy. Bronco and Jimmy. A little bit of time warp, and I'm not in a good position actually to get a min miss encounter. So, what I'm going to do is I will select Minmus as my target and then use the Rendezvous Planner to align my plane in orbit of Kerbin. Now, if I was really trying to be fuel efficient, I would have waited until Minmus was at the right locations. And I could have gotten a better, more fuel efficient approach instead of using, you know, 200 Delta V. But the SUVs actually have a lot of Delta V. They have almost 4,000. So I'm not really, really worried about it. I'm just burning for my min miss encounter now. As soon as I align my plane with uh, the Minmus orbit, I was able to get a pretty easy encounter. And I know it's not as interesting to watch this from the map view, and I kind of forgot I was recording while I was doing that. But here we have our Minmus encounter. I'm still pretty far out, but not nearly as far out as I was with the base. I've got plenty of time to slow my orbit so I don't escape the Minmus encounter. And here we are. I'm going to burn at periapsis and circularize my orbit. Maybe not quite that much. Now, one of the reasons why I wanted to make sure I aligned the... So, in Orbit of Minmus is Challenger Station. And I wanted to make sure I aligned the orbit of the base before I landed it with Challenger Station. So, presumably, at all times, the any craft that's in the same plane as Challenger Station should be in the same plane as the Minmus base. That way all I really had to do was get into align the plane with the Challenger Station and I should be able to land pretty close to the Minmus base. And I'm 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 kind of using my nav ball to come down on the Minmus base. The, the tricky part is Minmus is also rotating. Not fast, but, you know, fast enough. And I made a mistake here. One, there's also, there was something on the monitor that I thought was the Minmus base, but no, it was like a piece of dirt or something that I needed to clean off. And two, my shadow, I thought it, that was the Minmus base. I was wrong again, so I had to fly around just a little bit. But this is Minmus. And doing this on Minmus is a lot easier than the Mun. It just takes longer because there's so little gravity. And this brought... I was able to get pretty close. Now, as I said, all these missions aren't just for the sake of Jebediah. So I actually have brought a team of scientists who are going to be stationed 
on the Minmus base and they were on the SUV and now they are just going to take up residence and right here something really interesting happens I try nope maybe it's not this one it's the next guy yeah this guy I, I'm flying him a little better I figured you know what I can land him right there and as soon as I did he got flung to the other side that's okay and now we need to get Jebediah back to this is the SUV2 or the Bronco so Bronco is going to launch and do a quick rendezvous with Challenger Station So we're getting into about a roughly 50 kilometer orbit here, thereabouts, 54, 49. And now I'll use the rendezvous planner to get an encounter with Challenger Station. Now, once at Challenger Station, I, there are two, there's another craft I built that is meant to be a ferry. I call it the space bus. And its purpose, there's one that's supposed to go between Columbia Station, Norbert the Mun, and Enterprise Station. And then Space Bus 2 is meant to travel from Challenger Station to Enterprise Station. But I needed a craft to ferry a fuel tank over to Challenger Station from Kerbin Orbit, so I kind of borrowed one of the space buses, and it's there now, and it needs to go back to Kerbin and dock at Enterprise Station, so it seems fitting that Jebediah uh, hitch a ride as it does so. So here we are. We are on Minmus Station or Challenger Station. It will eventually also be doing some mining operations, although the mining craft that was stationed here kind of fell apart. So I currently don't have any more ships mining. I may fly the small mining ship to Minmus, but I haven't decided yet. I really don't know what to do with that ship as it's kind of really not useful. But anyway, there's the space bus. I'm going to get a Kerbin encounter and I'm looking for a around a 200 kilometer periapsis or at least close by now I did make a mistake here as in my I really should not have flown back at this time because the orbit is really, really far off. I'm just trying to get a roughly 200 kilometer orbit. And from here I'll use the rendezvous planner. But there's so much inclination on my orbit that it's going to take a lot of Delta V to fix that. Now the space bus has a good amount of Delta V. So I'm not in danger of running out, but I really, really should be more efficient because it takes so long to mine and produce rocket fuel on the surface of the MUN 
And then by the time I do that and fly all that rocket fuel up to, to Columbia Station, I can only really get one good fuel load back. And honestly, if, if I were to look at this as in-game time, each one of those runs is, takes around a month. Well, Kerbin month. Kerbin day is six hours. And it takes about 28 Kerbin days. Which I suppose is only seven. No, that's not right. Almost five, like normal, actually 24 hour days. But either way, here we are back at Enterprise Station, and Jebediah has now been to. He started out on the Columbia Station over the Mun, landed on the Mun the Mun base, and then flew from there on the tanker to Kerbin, landed at the Space Center, flew to the North Pole base, flew back to the Space Center, took a... launched a new surface base to Minmus, where he landed on the surface of Minmus. He then flew to Challenger Station in orbit of Minmus, and now he's back in orbit of Kerbin at Enterprise Station, and the only thing left to do is to ride the tanker back from Enterprise Station to Columbia Station in orbit of the Mun. And here we are. I The one thing I forgot to do that I should have done was I did not transfer all the monopropellant to the monopropellant holding tanks in orbit of Kerbin. And I didn't quite have a full load anyway. So that is not the end of the world. Also, I really don't have an ore holding tank in orbit of Kerbin. So I really could eliminate that ore tank that's on the front of this tanker. Because at the moment, I'm not really doing that. I think, though, for next season, I'm going to design a different tanker. While I like the design for this one, it is not 100% stable or... or balanced. It almost is, but it's not 100%. I have to give it small corrections each time. But we've made it back into orbit of the Mun. And I'm just going to use the rendezvous planner to get an encounter with Columbia Station. So here we are. This has required a lot of little small maneuvers, match velocities, get closer, match velocities, get closer. And well, anyway, we've made it back to Columbia Station, and this is kind of where we started. Not kind of where we started. This is where we started this episode. And the other thing I don't like about this tanker is it, it's kind of a little bit awkward to dock. And I could have done a better job at docking. It needs some more RCS on the side.
But here we are. We're all docked, and now Jebediah can transfer back to the Liberator. So this has been, you know, the whole, I'm calling this the end of the first season of the Reusable Space Program. It, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the way everything is. There have been a few accidents. Uh, we've lost two Kerbins, Tam G and Marnie, to a freak mining accident. But anyway, uh, season two. Um, during season two, I'll also be driving to the South Pole, amongst other things. And hey, we're heading to Duna. And, you know, we'll, we'll just see what happens. And if you haven't done so, hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And, you know, maybe, maybe I'll do something special for 150 subscribers. Thanks, guys. See you later.